This is the story of Eos and Tithonus. Tithonus was a fine, handsome young man, and when Eos, the goddess of the dawn, saw him, she was captivated and took him to be her lover. But Eos was an immortal, whilst Tithonus was just mortal man. Eos knew that her lover would be corrupted by time, would grow old and die. So she went to Zeus, the father of the gods. Great father Zeus, Eos said, grant me one simple boon. Let Tithonus be immortal too, so that I might have him live with me forever. That one thing, asked Zeus. Yes, said Eos, that one thing is all I ask. And Zeus granted Eos her request and made Tithonus immortal. And in those days, in the seasons of a young man, Eos and Tithonus were happy together. But the world turned, and as it did, Eos saw that Tithonus began to change. Lines began to crease his handsome face. The dark curls of his hair glinted with silver threads. The taut muscles in his arms, his thighs, his chest and back, they grew less tight, and as they slackened, their strength began to fade. And soon, it was clear for Eos to see that Tithonus grew weary too easily, and his movements, once so athletic, so full of grace, became heavier, slower, more cumbersome. Father Zeus, Eos asked, why does my Tithonus seem to fade before my eyes? Did you not make him immortal, as I asked? I did, Zeus said. I did as you asked, that one thing that you sought of me. Tithonus is immortal. He will not die. But he grows old, foolish child, and he will grow older yet. And realizing the mistake that she had made, Eos began to ask, But cannot you... Zeus cut off her words. Give him his youth for all eternity. No, child, I cannot. Not now. It is too late. One simple boon you asked of me. One simple boon I granted you. And in the palace where they dwell, Tithonus does live forever, just as Eos had asked, just as he might once have asked, but not as anyone would wish. Age has crept up on Tithonus, robbed him of the sparks of youth. It has wrapped him round in failing strength, laid bare his lungs to shortened breath, clouded his once piercing eyes. His joints are stiff, his limbs have grown weak and lost all purpose. His wits are withered and his tongue babbles. He drools and moans. And Eos, in her tormented sorrow, racked by loss and misery, has long since slipped out from their chamber and closed the door, barring it shut against the horror laid within. But go where she will, within the palace, in the gardens laid around, or through the countryside all about, even as she soars and rides high up in the morning sky, Eos cannot escape the wretched sound of Tithonus calling out, though his voice makes no words, gives vent only to a dark and tortured wailing, calling out, what? For death. 
for his release, for an end to his eternity. Oh, who would wish for what Tithonus has, for what is life with all its quickness gone? It's but a death that cannot be begun. <laughs>